So it's very nice having Prabhupada night. Every night, every day, every moment should be Prabhupada night, Prabhupada day, Prabhupada moment. It's a very helpful meditation for the devotee to always think what does my spiritual master want me to do? How should I behave now? How would I behave now if he was here? What does Prabhupada want us to do? So we can know what Prabhupada wants us to do. Prabhupada said, if you want to know me, read my books. So presumably you all want to know Prabhupada, otherwise you wouldn't be coming to this meeting. Is it? Pustapachanamakata. Ektu ektu. Not much. <coughs> so much wealth Prabhupada has given us. Prabhupada took so much trouble to spread the Krishna conscious movement, but traveling around the world, doing this, uh, meeting so many people, speaking to his devotees, meeting challenges, and all kinds of legal tangles, so many different things. But Prabhupada took the time and trouble to, every night, translate with the understanding that many drops wear away the stone. Do you know this saying? Is it, Prabhupada quoted this. There's an English saying, many drops wear away a stone. That means if you see a stone and water is dripping, drip, 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 then you'll find that after some time a depression is made in the stone. The drops of water gradually wear it away. So there's a saying, many drops wear away the stone. You wouldn't think that a stone could be influ influenced by water, but many drops gradually. Wear. So Prabhupada used this saying in regard to his translation work because Prabhupada took on the task of translating the Srimad Bhagavatam with elaborate purpose in English. If, if one has to translate in Hindi or Bengali, I'm not sure about Tamil, but most of these languages, you can more or less translate directly from the Sanskrit commentaries, or often from the Sanskrit verse and commentary. You can just change the grammar and syntax, and you'll have the same thing. Just like if you say, Savadhaman Paritta Ja Mame Kam Sharanam Raja. I don't know how to say in Tamil, but at least in Hindi you could say Sarva Dharma Tyag Karke Keval Mere Charanam Me Sharano. So it's more or less the, you can use more or less the same words in Hindi as in Sanskrit, but in English in, uh, these words are uh, Dharma. So none of these words, common words, sarva, dharma, tyag, sharan, there's no such word. So Prabhupada had to, in many cases, Prabhupada had to invent terms because there's not even any concept in English for many of these terms. Or even the concept, just like if you say, what are you going to say for rajagun, tamagun, sattvagun? Prabhupada had to invent terms because there's no, Prabhupada used the term the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, the mode of ignorance. Because there's no, and like this, the super soul, there's no such word in English for paramatma. And even the words that are there in English, they have misunderstandings inherent in them. Just like if we say, Krishna is God. But Krishna is not God according to the, what people usually think is God. People, what they think of God is it's a very strange idea. So Prabhupada preferred to use the term Godhead or Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because the language, even in itself, can be misleading. Soul, Prabhupada would usually say spirit soul. 
He didn't, have, he didn't usually just say soul, he'd say spirit soul. Because if you say soul, according to the definition that comes in English, it's not the same as that of Atma. We had a lot of problems like this when I was in Thailand for some time. And we wanted to get the Prabhupada's books translated in Thai. Very, very difficult. Because whatever spiritual terms are there, actually they're all borrowed from <coughs> Sanskrit, but they're all uh, mixed up with Buddhist concepts. So whatever you say, when, when you talk about meditation, the Thai word will come, I think the Thai word, vipassana, so, but that has a completely, uh, has com completely Buddhist understanding. So, there's a, there's a lot of cultural difficulty in transmitting Krishna consciousness to the Western world. But Prabhupada was actually empowered by Krishna. <coughs> Prabhupada said that when I, I write these books, he said, actually I don't write these books. Krishna comes and sits down next to me and dictates and then I speak. Now, recently, someone has criticized this statement of Prabhupada. There are various there are, very, <coughs> there are various people who have been associated with our movement who they have a doubtful mentality. In the in the Western world, especially in the North European countries and in America. People tend to have a very doubtful mentality, skepticism. This is a cultural trait inherited since the time of the so-called Enlightenment. The Enlightenment was a period in European history going back to about the 15th, 16th century in which people, previous to that, people just used to believe the Bible. But later on they thought, no, we have to use our own intelligence. We don't want, we won't accept the Bible. We'll use our own intelligence to understand everything. So this is called the Age of Enlightenment. And it's been extremely influential on, the, on Western thought up to the present day. In fact, in America at the present time, in America especially, there's a great cultural divide which was apparent in the recent American presidential election. That there were those who wanted to vote for the for Bush uh, perceiving him to represent traditional Christian values. And there were those who wanted to vote for Kerry perceiving him to uh, represent modern liberal values. So this skeptic, uh, the idea that we shouldn't really accept anything, we, only we should accept by our own intelligence. This is very prominent in the Western way of thinking. So even many of our devotees in the West, it seems in particular, they, they have a very difficult time subscribing to the understanding that we should accept Shastra. They think, why, why should we accept Shastra? Why? It's in, the, in India also we hear that. Why should, it was written by a man. Isn't it? Many times people say that. They're also just written by a man. That they, they, they don't accept that they, they can be and must be something which is coming from beyond the platform of man. They think that there's nothing there's nothing beyond our own intelligence. Anyway, to get back to the point, one of our uh, members of ISKCON, I'm not sure if he's still a member of ISKCON, but he recently made a, or recently an essay of his was published, in which he analyzed Prabhupada's translations. And he saw that Many, 
in different sections, just like I believe it was in the third canto, Prabhupada's translations very closely followed those of the Gita Press, Srimad Bhagavatam edition. And in different sections Prabhupada would use, it seems he used more different books more than others. For some part of the time he was mostly using his own guru, Bhaktisila Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur's translations, his Bengali purports, and transposing them into English. And especially in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, many of Prabhupada's purports, they're almost directly taken from Amrita Pravaha Bhasha, which is written by, you know, you're reading, Bhakti Nod Thakur and the Anubhasya by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So m many of Prabhupada's purports very closely follow. Not exactly, some parts, Prabh many places Prabhupada gave his own original purport also. But the, uh, anyway, this devotee or ex-devotee was saying that, you see, he's just translating what the previous people have given and even using the Gita Press translation. So how can you... He, he was implying that how can you say that Krishna was directly speaking to him? But the others from the scholarly community of our Western devotees have seen that many of Prabhupada's writings, they're actually like that, translations from the previous Acharya's commentaries. And they consider this to be what is called plagiarism. It's, it's, it's a term which means that you take someone else's writing and you publish it in your own name, as if it's your own original writing. So this is, con this is considered unethical among Western scholars that you sh if you use someone else's writing you should say this is take this is give their name and to put your own name it's they consider it to be a form of cheating but uh, again this shows the clash between the the western mindset and the traditional vedic mindset because in the western world that's considered to be a kind of cheating because what everyone writes is supposed to be their own original contribution. So if you, if you take someone else's writing and pretend it's your own, that's a kind of cheating. But the, in the Vedic tradition, the Acharyas, they don't consider it's my own original contribution, but they simply, you'll find every Acharya, Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami writes, Prabhupada writes, they all write that and we're simply transmitting the message of the previous Acharya. They don't claim that we have got something new, but rather they are saying that our duty as Acharya is to transmit what the previous Acharyas have given. And you'll find even, just like in the commentaries, for instance, of Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur on Srimad Bhagavatam, that sometimes his whole commentary is exactly word for word the same commentary as Sridhar Swami's before him. But that's not considered to be anything wrong. He's, he's simply repeating what the previous Acharya said. But he also in other places gives further uh, Shastrically based insights. So in the Vedic tradition that's, that, there's not, that's not considered wrong, that is considered right. That one should, and it's understood that the Acharyas, they have to quote the previous Acharyas and that, and that in their commentary it's not exactly that of the previous Acharyas but it incorporates what they have given and maybe expands on it. Or, or sometimes, just sometimes they may quote the previous Acharyas at one point and sometimes not. So, uh, this is their prerogative and it's understood that as an Acharya his duty is to simply transmit what he has received. But this is, 
And so it's not considered anything wrong to give the previous Acharya's commentary. It's, it's, it, it's the normal practice to do so. So it's a completely different outlook in the Western, the Western way of thinking, or the modern so-called enlightened way of thinking. It's a completely different outlook. So if we try to approach, if we try to understand Krishna or the Acharyas through our own way of thinking, it won't be possible. We have to approach to the parampara system. Now what about the point Prabhupada said that Krishna is standing next to me and dictating? But there's also no discrepancy there. If Krishna may dictate, you, you, uh, you translate this part, you translate that part. Or even to take from Gita Press, you may say, well the Gita Press translation, it's not, uh, that's not by an enlightened person. But as Prabhupada said, the, the, uh, he actually said about Dr. Radha Krishnan, who Prabhupada was a great philosophical enemy of Dr. Radha Krishnan. So, for some time, when Prabhupada was first teaching Krishna consciousness in New York, they would read the translation from the Bhagavad Gita purport of Dr. Radha Krishnan. And Prabhupada said that the translations are 90% okay, but the main thing is the purport. The purports he gives are, are wrong. So, I, I've seen in the Gita Press translations also, they're, pretty, they're deliberately trying to be faithful to the original. So Prabhupada would sometimes use them as a basis, but it's in the commentary, explaining what it means. That's, that's crucial. Prabhupada said the purport. Prabhupada even said about his Bhagavad Gita that the purports are more important than the translations. That's amazing, isn't it? Because actually we can't understand the translation unless we read the purport. So the point I was making is that Prabhupada put so much effort into translating these books and he made it a priority that this, whatever was happening he would go on translating unless there was some really, sometimes there was some major management crisis. There's always some management crisis. Sometimes devotees become discouraged if there's some management crisis in our ISKCON. But it's always there and it probably always will be there because we're attempting to preach Krishna consciousness in the Kali Yuga. And it's a war on Maya. So there'll always be some problem or other. We can't, if we're in the battlefield and we complain, oh, it's not very peaceful here. Well, what do you expect? It's a battlefield. If you wanted peace, then you should have become a yogi, not a soldier. If the soldiers, they go on strike, oh, it's, just, it's too much shooting here. We're going on strike. And then the, the Pakistanis take over Kargil. So, because the soldiers go on strike. No, the soldiers, they can't complain. It's a battlefield and you, there the bullets flying. Well, that's part of the job. Then you, why did you become a soldier? You should have become a, you know, a salesman or something like this. Soldier means you have to face the bullets. It's not, it's not always nice. And sometimes there's, there's bad planning or something, but still the fight has to go on. So Krishna consciousness means a fight against Maya. We can expect there'll be so many ups and downs. Of course, if there's really bad planning in the army and they lose, lose a major battle because of that, then the generals may be, they may be called to task. But the point is, even then, the soldier, his duty is to fight. So, the point I make here is that sometimes devotees, they seem to think that, that uh, there are so many problems in ISKCON now, but there were always problems, even from the very beginning. So, when Prabhupada was present, there were so many problems also, due to our immaturity or personal ambitions, or whatever the reason is. It's Maya, no doubt, that causes it, directly or indirectly. So, what I was saying was that Prabhupada would go on with his translation, and that sometimes he would, there was some very severe management problem, especially with his Bombay project. 
devotees sometimes did some foolish things like signing, rescinding the contract and giving everything back to Mr. Naya. They actually did that at one point. That Mr. Naya, who was trying to cheat them of the land, convinced them that why are you taking so much trouble? Why don't you just give it back to me? And they did. Prabhupada was shocked because he promised Krishna that I'm going to build a temple for you here. So, but Prabhupada, many times if you read Prabhupada's letters, Prabhupada would say to his top leaders that you, you take over the management and just relieve me of this burden so that I can translate because this is my most important service. Prabhupada wrote in one letter that I can, I don't have to go on traveling and preaching, I can stop this. But I cannot stop this writing. This is more important, Prabhupada said. Because this is my service to my Guru Maharaj, my prime service. Prabhupada would sometimes go away for a writing retreat. He would just go away from all the temples and just write. And that time he'd do a lot of work. But, but uh, even when he was traveling, every night he would do some work. So we can see how much Prabhupada considered important his books. He put so much effort into them, going on translating and encouraging his disciples to write also, and very much stressing the distribution of his books. Prabhupada was very, very much pleased. He very much wanted this distribution of his books. Very, very much wanted this. There's one incident which I've included in my book, My Memories of Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> that one time the devotees were asking, is on a morning walk, the devotees were asking Prabhupada different questions about Gopi Leela and all these kind of things. Now in ISKCON today, there's more talk about Gopi Leela and all these things. But I included this incident because it, it shows something of Prabhupada's mood. And they were talking about Gopi Leela and Prabhupada, he wasn't talking much, he wasn't giving much, they were asking questions. And then one devotee, Shravas Das, who, um, he really wanted to say something to Prabhupada, but he never said anything because most of the devotees, they, most of the devotees, they didn't get a chance to speak to Prabhupada. I also, because, you know, how many, how many people can one person deal with? It's just like sometimes devotees tell me that, well, I've been initiated for four years, but I never spoke to my guru once. But what can you expect if someone has several thousand disciples? It's, spread out here. You can't really expect that he'll sit down for half an hour with everyone individually. It's not possible. So, Svavas, he was thinking that I want to get a chance in this lifetime just to, at least once to say something to please Srila Prabhupada. So he was afraid. He was on the walk. But then just before they reached the car to go back, Prabhupada he, he came up and nervously said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, I'm one of your book distributors and we're distributing your books at the airport every day and we're all trying to distribute at least 100 books every day. They were distributing big books. Prabhupada was stressing on big books. And we're not able to do it every day, but we pray for your blessings that we can do. And Prabhupada stopped and looked at him and he, he didn't know what he was going to say. And Prabhupada had a big smile. He said, yes, this is the real disciple. He simply thinks how to please his spiritual master. And on the whole walk, Prabhupada hadn't been talking much. Devotees had been asking questions about Gopi, Leela, this, that. And then, but for the rest of the walk, Prabhupada, just going back to the car, Prabhupada is talking, glorifying how the devotees are surrendering, they're doing book distribution, it's very pleasing. So Shravas Prabhu took that to heart and he's been promoting book distribution ever since. He's been 
been the temple president in Los Angeles for many years. Before that, I believe he was temple president in Denver. So I recently visited America, and uh, in my mind, out of the temples I've seen, the Los, Los Angeles temple is by far the best. They put emphasis, because Prabhupada, he wrote in one letter that our, book dis our temples are not meant to be places for eating and sleeping, but bases from which devotees go out to distribute books. Prabhupada gave the example because Prabhupada had been in Calcutta in the Second World War. Prabhupada said that just like in the war, the bombs are raining from the sky. So in the same way these books should be raining out everywhere. And then in one purport, Prabhupada wrote that all the activities in our Krishna conscious movement are centered around distributing books. So distributing books means distributing principally Prabhupada's books. There are other transcendental literatures also. Prabhupada wanted that his disciples write books. He, he had uh, Surup Damada Prabhu, now Bhakti Surup Damada Maharaj, he, he had him write the scientific basis of Krishna consciousness and had that published by the BBT and Prabhupada wanted that distributed very widely. And there was the, uh, also Sat Surup Maharaj wrote readings in Vedic literature and that was printed while Prabhupada was present. So Prabhupada wanted these, these books distributed also. But principally we distribute Prabhupada's books and principally we read Prabhupada's books. There are many other books also. But uh, Prabhupada wanted that his book distribution should be the, the basis of, of, of his movement. And I say Raj Shravas Prabhu, so he's kept book distribution very much in the center. The Los Angeles temple is situated 15 minutes drive from the airport, which isn't very much in a huge city like Los Angeles. I mean, Los Angeles makes even Chennai look like a smaller place. It's huge, huge, ridiculously big city. So, uh, it's only 15 minutes drive from the airport. When I arrived in the airport in Los Angeles, the first time I went there, so, uh, we were just coming out and we saw three book distributors. And then I wanted to go to some airline offices to confirm my onward flight, so I was walking around the airport different. And totally we saw nine book distributors. I don't know if that was all of them, but I saw nine book distributors at the airport. That's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, it wasn't that they were waiting for me. <laughs> they were just there, every day they're going. And one of them, Brigupati Prabhu, he's, I first met, he's from California, but I first met him, he was in Australia. He's my godbrother, and he's been distributing books as a full-time service since 1972. Going out every day, distributing books, and he's still one of the top distributors. There are others in America also, Vaisheshika. Prabhu, he's been distributing Prabhupada's books for so many years and he goes around and he inspires others to distribute books also. In Seattle in America, I met one devotee from uh, Tirunel Veli, who's one of the, quite a few Indians who are working for Bill Gates and others in Seattle. So he's taken up Krishna consciousness there and he goes out and distributes books to the Americans. And he's pretty good at it too. Vaisheshi could train him up. Oh, you know what? In, in Los Angeles, one of the distributors, he's originally from uh, Bello. He's a Christian boy from Bello. Went to, somehow he went out to America. And uh, he's distributing, he joined ISKCON there and he's distributing books at the airport. This is the real glory of Tamil Nadu. <laughs> Bharata Bhumite Hoyla Manusha Janma Ja Janma Shata Kari Kara Para Upata Priti Vite Ache Jatunagaradi Gram Sabata Pacha Hai Mana. 
So this is uh, very inspiring. I, also in, in uh, Denver, I, there was one Mataji, my, my god sister, and she's like that. She never married, but she's been going out every day on Bhuktish. Every day means seven days a week. Really dedicated. For, you know, for some of the new bhaktas in the temple, they're not, they, she was going out on book distribution before they were even born. For even ten years before they were born. And they're going out now on book distribution. So uh, her name is Nidra Devi Das in Denver. So I mean this is very inspiring, isn't it? It's very inspiring when we hear about Prabhupada. And it's very inspiring when we hear about devotees who have really dedicated their lives for the service of Srila Prabhupada. Especially the, those who are going on book distribution. You see if someone's a sannyasi and then people come and say jai and all this kind of thing and give garlands and feed you and all this and that. And you get, it's big ra-ra. It's called ra-ra in the West. It means a lot of dhum dam, name, fame, glory, all this kind of thing. But those who are going out on book distribution, they're, they're mostly just mixing up with all the new bhaktas who are going out. And there's not much name, fame, glory in that. But uh, they're actually highly advanced devotees. And they're not interested in anything but serving Prabhupada by distributing his books. There are other devotees also in America. I mean, then these are not the only ones. There's another, she was in Bombay for some time, Nata Gopal, and she's been distributing books for, for so many years. Radhanath, Brahmachari, in a wheelchair, he had two legs cut off, he's been... Did you ever see him? Did he come here? Is he, he was in Bombay for a few years and he recently came back. And he, he has to lie back in a wheelchair like that, he has some debilitating disease, he's had for many years. But he goes out every day on book distribution. He can't walk, but he's out there every day distributing Srila Prabhupada's books. And these are amazing personalities. They've taken Prabhupada's book distribution so much to heart. <coughs> so I was speaking about Los Angeles Temple, how It's, it's full of life. It's wonderful. They have so many new brahmacharis joining and morning and evening Bhagavatam class. A lot of Prabhupada disciples actively engaged in the mission. One thing about America is there are so many Prabhupada disciples there because that was the main place where ISKCON expanded when Prabhupada was present. But especially in Los Angeles I found many Prabhupada disciples there associated with the temple Many you'll find every day at Mongolarati and then engaged in service either full time or part time. So very encouraging. You can see where the book distribution is emphasized and there's that brings the blessings of Prabhupada. There's no doubt about it. Prabhupada himself wrote that I I'm simply doing on the order of my Guru Maharaj to write these books. Prabhupada said, with blind faith. Generally, we don't emphasize blind faith. But with book production and distribution, we may think, well, why so much emphasis on this? On distributing these books, which in the Western countries especially, people... It may be very difficult to understand. I was in Japan also on the way back from Los Angeles. So I was going on this bullet train and I saw the Japanese people, what do they read? They read comic books. They are they're, they're like they're very good at making cell phones and TVs, but actually, they're, in many ways, they're pretty stupid people. They, they're not an intellectual; they're intelligent shudras. So they're reading comic books, and if you see in America, what people read, they're, mostly they're all watching TV, Tom and Jerry, and baseball games, and, and what do you? How do you expect them to read Bhagavad Gita as it is? As soon as they open it, and Prabhupada insisted the Sanskrit should be there, as soon as they open it, they'll think this is some Egyptian hieroglyphics or something. And uh, it's, very intellectu it's very intellectually challenging. 
And mostly people just want something to read for entertainment. If at all they're going to read. So you might think that what's the use of distributing these books? Some of these people say, well, people don't read them. But my dear sir, they do read them. They do read them and become devotees by reading them. So mostly, especially in the Western countries, people become devotees. Their first contact with Krishna consciousness is by reading Prabhupada's books. Same with me. Got the book, read through it. I also didn't understand all these funny words and so many things. But I could understand there's something very substantial here. If we make very cheap, then why should anyone take any interest? But if we present, Prabhupada wanted to present these books in a very scholarly way. He wanted the Sanskrit should be in there, word for word translation. He wanted that the, the Sanskrit be profusely quoted with index, all these things he wanted to show this is something very substantial. This is not simply someone's opinion. This is ancient scripture. So I may say that not everyone takes interest, but actually many people do, and many people respect that very much, that these are uh, authorized traditional scriptures in, in a parampara, even in the Western countries. And uh, Vijay Prabhu, he's another great Sankitan hero. Did he come here? Yeah. One year back. One year back, yeah. He's traveling around encouraging others in book distribution and he also himself distributes so many books. So he told me that many of the books in America they distribute by setting up a book table at the universities and the students, especially and also the faculty members, they come and they look and they buy. Of course they preach them when they come, but you can see that there's, there's good interest in these books. So, we should go on distributing these books. Prabhupada will be pleased. Prabhupada, the very famous quote, Prabhupada said that just go on distributing, increasing this book distribution. And Prabhupada said, and the Krishna conscious movement will automatically increase. Now, we find that in India, people, the tendency is to be pious. Just on the way here, we visited one. Keshav, Paramal, Koyal. And there were different Brahmanas, presumably. They were chanting Vishnu Sahasranam. And both with Vaishnava Tilak and Smarta, Shaiva Tilak. They're all sitting together. So actually, it created a very, very nice atmosphere. The chanting. By chanting the holy names, created a very soothing atmosphere, very different to coming out on the street. If you go in the temple and the chant is gone, very nice. So, it's yet again a reminder for me that despite India being so modernized and fallen, that still there's a lot of piety in India. Of course, being pious isn't enough, one has to surrender to Krishna. But it's a good start. It's better than being a Rakshasa. It's to be a... Even without proper understanding or whatever, coming to the temple, chanting the holy names. So this makes a very nice atmosphere. So, people in India, the tendency is to be pious and Religion is very important, part of life in India, uh, no doubt about it. The Kanchi Shankaracharya's arrest, there are so many people arrested in India every day, but his arrest has, uh, it's, it's a national issue because he's a s spiritual, uh, or we can say religious leader. He's a religious leader. So uh, people, a tendency to be religious, 
But what we find is that often people, when they start to take an interest in religion, it may be that, see many people, they're just going on with their lives, that at some point in life, <coughs> they feel, oh, so many problems, this, that, whatever. For whatever reason, they think, now let me turn to religion. And usually at this point, they try to find out some books. But mostly they go for Vivekananda books, or more recently Rajneesh Osho, or in this part of India maybe this Chinmayananda is also very popular, isn't it? So we have to distribute Prabhupada's books. And more and more, we want that people will turn to Prabhupada's books and recognize that this is genuine spiritual knowledge. <coughs> that will be a great service to Srila Prabhupada. We're talking about Prabhupada, Prabhupada Night. So we want to remember Prabhupada. Certainly, we want to remember Prabhupada. But we have to think, how can we serve Srila Prabhupada in the best possible way. Actually, Prabhupada was asked that on at least two occasions. How can we serve you in the best way? Because Prabhupada was always emphasizing, yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada, yasya prasada, nagyati patoti. By the mercy of the spiritual master, one attains the benediction of Krishna. Then what's the next line? Yasya, yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada. Then next line? Yasya prasada. Yes, sometimes they say yasya prasada, nagati kutopi. But if you say that, that means by his mercy there's no hope. It's yasya aprasada. By, his, by not getting his mercy, nagati kutopi. Yasya prasada. Nagati kutopi. Api here means that whatever else one may do, one may chant 64 rounds, one may bathe in Radha Kund, one may recite Gopi Geet, one may follow Bhishma Panchakam. There are so many different things one can do, but if one does not get the mercy of the spiritual master, then Nagati. One does not attain the goal. What is the goal? Gati Govinda. That's a, there are various names, sometimes in Bengal and Orissa, devotees are given names. Gati Govinda, Gati Krishna. We'll find also, isn't that uh, Vishnu Sahasrama, Gati Da, Gati Sattama, like this. Krishna is the goal, and he's the giver of the goal. He is the goal of the saintly person. Gati. So devotees used to ask Prabhupada, well, how can we please you the best? Because we want to please you. Because if we please you, we'll please Krishna. And our life is perfect. That also, uh, Jai Prashade, Shri Guru Charane Rati, Eishay Uttamagati, Jai Prashade Pure Sarva Asha. Attachment to the Lotus Feet of the spiritual master is in itself the perfection, the topmost perfection that fulfills all desires. So devotees asked, oh no, they, they were expecting Prabhupada to say that by distributing my books, because Prabhupada used to emphasize this. But on one occasion Prabhupada said, chant Hare Krishna. You can please me the best by chanting Hare Krishna. Prabhupada said, you're already doing that. So go on chanting. On another occasion Prabhupada said, if you love Krishna. So, uh, Certainly, distributing Prabhupada's books is very pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we must emphasize this because Prabhupada emphasized this. But also, we have to see to our basic sadhana and how to be Krishna conscious, how to think of Krishna, how to remember Krishna. Actually, if we don't do proper sadhana, then we can't distribute books anyway. All it's a Krishna consciousness is a holistic program. We have to hear and chant and serve. So many things we have to do. So let us do so by 
remembering Srila Prabhupada. Can you please bring that book, My Memories of Srila Prabhupada? Usually, you expect that if there's a Prabhupada disciple, he'll tell some of his personal memories. So let's have a look. I don't have that much to say actually because I didn't. Well, I managed to write 14 pages of memories of Prabhupada, including I listened to lectures which I knew I must have been present at. I li- and then by listening again, it brought back all the memories going back many years. How I was sitting in the lecture. Actually, most of Prabhupada's lectures I was sitting through, that was in India. And I was so sick, I was just struggling to stay awake. But I remembered some things. So I, I just read one thing. Oh, this is about Prabhupada's books. So this is one section I wrote. Associating with Srila Prabhupada through his Vani. Because I, I actually wrote this book because devotees always used to ask me that did you please tell us about how you met Prabhupada and this and that. So everyone wants to know. So I'll write the book. So I wrote that. So this comes after the section of my how I saw Prabhupada, what he said to me, what I heard him say and all these things. So now this section. So I've written So now, devotees who wanted to know of my association with Srila Prabhupada may be satisfied. Quantitatively, there isn't much to say, but qualitatively, it is inexpressible by words. What devotees maybe don't realize is that I am still associating with Srila Prabhupada. When I read Srila Prabhupada's books, I strongly feel his presence as if he is speaking to me personally, which he is. You all have that experience? When you read Prabhupada's books, it's like Prabhupada speaking to you personally, isn't it? Isn't it? You feel that? I hope you feel that. Many, many times, devotees have the experience. They have some doubt in their mind or something. They just open Prabhupada's books, and exactly that point is, is, is addressed, isn't it? Yes. Amma. Yes. The, the instruction, this is a quote from Prabhupada, from a letter. The instruction given my, in my books is supposed to be personal instruction. When we read the Bhagavad Gita as it is, it is understood that we are receiving personal instructions of Krishna. No physical barrier is there in the case of spiritual affairs. Then back to my writing. At least in my life, as with so many devotees, whatever has happened to me in Krishna consciousness began with reading one of Srila Prabhupada's books. Looking back at what the Krishna book did for me, that was the first book I read of Prabhupada's, I can very confidently state that Srila Prabhupada's books are not really books at all, at least not in the ordinary sense. Srila Prabhupada's books are not simply pieces of paper with ink on them. Srila Prabhupada's books are mercy incarnations of Krishna in literary form, presenting himself through his chosen representative. Krishna is personally present in every letter along with his pure devotee Srila Prabhupada. It must be so, otherwise how could they alter and uplift lives as they do? Other devotees may be claimed to be more eloquent or scholarly than Srila Prabhupada. But no one's books can penetrate the hearts of so many people as Srila Prabhupada's do. Do you get the point? Sometimes said that, you know, some devotee is more scholarly than Prabhupada. And now there are many books of Prabhupada's godbrothers and others being distributed. But none of them have the potency of Prabhupada's books to change, to change the lives of people. So many people. That's why Srila Prabhupada's books although apparently quite simple, have unparalleled potency. And it's not 
that they are just primary introductions to philosophy, something to be read before going on to, quote, higher things, unquote. They are supremely authoritative because they are Krishna. As Srila Prabhupada said, everything you need to know to become fully Krishna conscious is in my books. Everything means everything. Like the bottomless wells found at several holy places in India, Srila Prabhupada's books may seem to be ordinary, but those who go deeper find there is no end. Of course, Srila Prabhupada's books are masterpieces of erudition as recognized by scholars throughout the world, but they go far beyond ordinary academics. In every line, every word, Srila Prabhupada is urging us to surrender to Krishna. Moreover, on every reading we get fresh, fresh inspiration of the pressing need to share this knowledge with others. I bow down to Srila Prabhupada's books and worship them. I worship Srila Prabhupada, who came to me in the form of his books and saved me. All glory is to Srila Prabhupada, who expands himself as his books that go to every nook and cranny of the world, searching out lost followers like heat-seeking missiles. They pierce through thick crusts of false ego and reach to the soul who then awakens from his long slumber and wonders, O oh Krishna, how have I forgotten you? So, Hare Krishna, please give the bag, just give the whole bag. So are there any questions or comments on these points? Yeah. Ten thousand books. That means, uh, means you all have to get to work. Is it? That's quite a challenge. That's quite a challenge. One lake, eight thousand Bhagavad Gita's, yeah. They're ahead of Madras. I was just saying to Sri Giridhari Prabhu today, how in Salem, they're finding it a little difficult in distributing books because they've been around to every house and shop twice. They've covered the whole place, door to door. And he was saying in Nadurai it's the same thing also. They've just they go out steadily every day. If you go out steadily every day, it's like that drop wearing away the stone. Prabhupada was using that to how just by translating few hours every day, Prabhupada is able to produce so many books. So like that, if you go out every day and you the devotees are going out and visiting different houses, then after some time you cover a whole city. Of course, Chennai is quite a big city, but we'll be happy when we have that. Well, not really. Actually, they, people say, oh, I already got your book. But actually, they should say, oh, you came again? Why are you so late? I want some more book. That sometimes happens also, doesn't it? Yeah. But most... Most people, I guess they're taking out of some kind of piety or something like that. One thing um, I've noted is that most Hindu homes, you'll find there's Bhagavad Gita, some copy of Bhagavad Gita, isn't it? But almost no Hindus have any idea what Bhagavad Gita is all about. <laughs> I think they, they just keep it in their home as a kind of some kind of auspicious, just like they wear this tabis, you know. There must be some completely different word in Tamil. This thing you wear on your arm, the, the locket or what? 
Thai. Thai. I can't say Thai. <laughs> Maybe another lifetime. In Hindi, it's called. Actually, in Sanskrit, it must be Kavacha, but but the usual word used in Hindi is Tabis, Urdu word, somehow or other. Huh? Kavacha, yeah. How they use the word Tabis, I mean, it's a completely Hindu thing. Anyway, they, they, they're keeping the Bhagavad Gita like that. And many people say, well, we already have Bhagavad Gita in our home, isn't it? So what do you say to them then? Yeah, you should take Bhagavad Gita Unmai Uravil. Because, is it? Was that good enough? I can say a few words in Tamil. But it's a little difficult for me. Uh, what you can say is, yes, there are many editions of Bhagavad Gita. But only this edition has changed the lives of thousands of people all over the world, which means that this edition has the potency of Krishna. This has got the same potency, of course they may be afraid to buy it now, but uh, they, they just want something to give them good luck. But you can say like this, this has all the potency. So there are so many different things. Um, many times people say, oh, we're interested in meditation and yoga, isn't it? Then you can give them the path of yoga, the, that they made three books, in the, the path of perfection and, and perfection of yoga has been made in one book. Or uh, some of say we're interested in science, then you can give them this Origins magazine, or Life Comes From Life, or the, you can say, uh, yes, yes, I'm very... Uh, I, I already have so many books, you can say, here, this, this is for your children who are studying science. This is a science magazine. You see, and it's written by so-and-so from, from America, Sada Puta, whose Kami name is Richard Thompson, PhD from America. You see? It's very good for your children. We also believe in science. You can tell them. Yes, we also believe in science. Because you don't tell them we don't believe in your nonsense science. Right? We believe in Bhagavad Tattva Vigyana. Yes, we're also science. Yes, very good. And give them this Origins. That's very good, that Origins magazine. Prabhupada wanted that. that Prabhupada had this life from life comes from life. But he told that his scientist disciples, you present the same thing, but in scientific terms. So that's that Origins magazine is doing. You can get life comes from life. So many different things. Whatever people say, we should have some book for them. When ladies come, we can say, here's the teachings of Queen Kunti. See, great lady devotee. We're also studying. Like that, if they're they're interested in women's rights and all this, you can say. See, we're studying book by Queen Kunti, Rani. You say that in Tamil? Rani. Rani Kunti Devi. So all that, whatever they say, you should have some book for them. One of the great book distributors, one of the first great book distributors, who passed away a few years ago in Vrindavan, he used to have a great technique for selling books. This is on the streets in Australia and America. They, they would stop people and ask, if they didn't take the book, he would fall down at his feet and hold on to the feet and say, please take the book, please. And they're just so embarrassed. They, didn't, they, didn't know, they had no idea. They, they couldn't imagine ever, anyone ever doing this. And so, oh, oh okay. Like this. Yeah. So you can try that, if you like. People say, no, you can fall at their feet and say, please, I beg you, take this book. Suggestion. So that was Buddhi Mantra Prabhu. So much desire that this person should not I go away without the book. That I'm standing here, I've got these books, they need these books. 
Somehow I have to convince him. Take a book. There are many other ways also we can... The Shastra Dan program is also very good. That people give some donation and then we can distribute cheaply. That should be done maybe cheaply in villages. Let the people in the city pay. They have money. Most of them. Have some money anyway. Or it can be distributed free also in schools. Hospitals are very good because people are just lying there with nothing to do, feeling miserable. There's a lot of preaching by Christians in hospitals, isn't it? So we should also go present the books like this. If we can get sponsors. Or you can go to rich people and say, you can sponsor for the school you visited, for the school you attended. You please, uh, every year you can present books to all the passing out students like this. Or one thing devotees used to do, I don't know why they're not doing now, can still be done. You look in the newspaper every day and see who has died. You contact the relatives and you uh, tell, now you should distribute 100, 200 Bhagavad Gita's in memory of your deceased father or whatever. Hmm? Father. Yeah, you, and then you put something in the book, in memory. And you can just, nowadays it's very easy, you can do right from the computer. Hmm? Right, right, right. Yeah, you should, they, you can look up in the newspaper and then check if they're life members or if there's any other phone contact. And then uh, you keep, the, keep their birth date and say on, your, on the birthday you're supposed to distribute gifts in the Vedic tradition. So why don't you distribute some Bhagavad Gita's? It'll be very auspicious. Uh, you think how to do. There are so many ways we can in, increase the book distribution. This going door to door is also very important. Many drops wear away the stone. That's another way in the trains, at the train station. Airport is also very good. I don't know now. You stay, but in America they're still doing. But in India, this is this is I'm talking about about 1970 something. There was one devotee who used to go daily to Calcutta to the airport. He used to do very well. Big books only. So there are so many possibilities. So just see what you can do to help with this Sankirtan mission, distributing Prabhupada's books. I'm going away for writing at this time. Writing. I was just in Vrindavan, I was praying to the deities, Giriraj Govardhan, please bless me. For so many years I've been writing this book on Bhaktisthan Saraswati Thakur. Now almost finished. So, asking for the blessings to eventually finish this. So I ask all your blessings also. That you please bless me, I can finish this. I just, maybe the writing part I have maybe another two, three weeks. I have to read some more things. A lot of reading I have to do for this. So many old Bengali articles. Very difficult Bengali. I have to go through and then extract different points and put it in. So I think in three weeks I can finish the writing. And uh, then after that there's final editing, which shouldn't take too long because it's been edited, it's, it's been going along. Then layout will take some time, especially there are many old pictures which no one, no, hardly anyone has seen for like more than 70 years from old magazines. And then there's indexing, so it'll take some time. So, I'm begging for the blessings for this big project to glorify the founder of the Brihad Murdanga. He called writing and distributing books. He could, well, he specifically referred to the press as the Brihad Murdanga. So, Prabhupada told me to write books. So, I'm doing so. And I beg your blessings that I can do so. Otherwise, I don't know how I'm ever going to finish these books. I haven't been getting the blessings of the Vaishnavas. So 
so now I have nothing left to do but beg. Please give me no blessings, otherwise no hope. So, what is the time? Is that quarter to nine? I have to leave here at 9.30, I have a train tonight at 10.30 from Egmont to Sri Rangam and hoping to take shelter at the feet of Sri Ranganatha Swami for my for this writing endeavor. I spent almost two months this year in, in Puri writing also at the shelter of Jagannath. So now I'm going to planning to take shelter or begging to take shelter at the lotus feet of Ranganatha Swami. So I don't have much time. So maybe we can have a little kirtan. Uh, just maybe for 10 minutes or so. Is that alright? Because I want to meet. Just I'll say hello. How are you doing in your Krishna consciousness? So you, usually devotees come to me and this and that. So you leave some time for that. As usual, I have my books also, which I'm trying to distribute here. And CDs of lectures here. Yeah. We have Jai Srila Prabhupada and my memories of Srila Prabhupada, which are suitable for Prabhupada night. And many other books also. That Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu book in Tamil, you all saw that? That's a new one, published. If you didn't get it, you might like to get Prem Avataram Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I specifically wrote this because. Mostly people in India, at least they've heard something about Krishna. Or maybe they've heard something about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But they don't know. They should know. People should know who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the, I wrote this particularly for getting translated into different Indian languages. And the first language it's come out in is Tamil. Many thanks to the devotees who are helping with that. It's actually translated in Hindi and Gujarati, but I don't know what, it's all slowed up. I don't know why it's not printed. So, like this, we, this is a small endeavor towards educating people in India about who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's also very good for our devotees because we tell, first of all, should read Gita, Nectar Devotion, Bhagavatam, and then only Chaitanya Charitamrita. So that takes a long time to read all those books. So often devotees don't even know that much about Mahaprabhu's leelas. So this is an overview of his leelas.